Welcome everybody to another Argument for God debunked video where we're going to talk today about the Transcendental Argument for God, commonly known as the TAG Argument. So let's get started. So basically the TAG Argument goes something like this. We know that there's logic in the world, right? We use logic to understand truths, we use logic to understand reality, but where does this logic come from, right? We know that logic seems to be universal. It seems to be that everywhere you go in the universe, it applies. Logic applies. It also seems that logic is absolute. No matter what anybody says, it's always true. It doesn't matter what you say or I say. Logic, what's logical, is always going to be what's true. If the conclusions follow from the premises, then that logic is true. And it seems like logic isn't material, right? If I say, where, where does logic exist? You can't point to it. There's no physical object you can point to and say that that's where, that's where logic is. So it seems as if we've created this entity that must ground logic. It has to be immaterial because logic is immaterial. It has to be universal, it has to be absolute. It can't change because logic doesn't change. So let's call this entity God. God is what grounds logic and the preconditions required for intelligibility and rationality and logic and truth. Now, at first, this might seem like a good argument. I mean, yeah, I mean, if something's true, it's true regardless of what you say. And even if everybody didn't exist as people, well, it would still be true that trees existed before us or that the earth existed before us, right? That statement would still be true. So there has to be some kind of mind that transcends all of our minds, which grounds these truths and logic. But here's where the argument fails, and it really fails for two big reasons. The laws of logic, or technically speaking, the laws of thought, are not prescriptive necessarily when it comes to reality. Laws of logic are merely descriptive. In other words, they act to describe reality. Logic itself is a language. It's a model of reality that humans use to describe how things operate. The three classical laws of logic, right? Uh, Non-contradiction, identity, excluded middle. These are ways our brains think about the world around us. If I have a bottle, it's a bottle and not a car. A equals A. These are ways our minds describe how things work around us. So the laws of logic themselves are merely thought processes in our minds, but reality itself, the things we're describing through this logic, right, what we call reality, that is a separate thing. So just understand that logic is separate from reality in the sense that there is an existence, whatever the, the ontology of nature, right, whatever the nature of reality is, is still unknown to us. We don't know what exactly it is with absolute certainty. But there is something there. We, we call it existence. And we use our logic to describe existence. So existence still exists without us, of course. But logic wouldn't exist without minds, human minds, aka these descriptions of reality wouldn't exist without our minds. So what these theists are doing when they say logic is reality, they're confusing the map for the territory or the map for the game. Here, an example is GTA 5, right? When you play GTA 5, there's a world that these characters exist in. That's a real world, well, virtually speaking. But what the theist is doing analogously is simply saying, well, here's a map of GTA 5. We have a map. The theist would say that that map is the same thing as reality, when we obviously know it's not. The map is merely a model of what we think the game is. Right? It's just a, a secondary model we use to describe the, the game. So the map is not identical to the game of GTA 5, just like logic is not identical to a reality. So now, if we understand that logic is merely a description of reality, well, the next question is, wouldn't that make logic subjective? Doesn't that mean that logic is just uh, something that we can make up and, and change whenever we want to? No. Because logic is a set of principles, right? It's a set of axioms that are defined to be certain things. 
in other words, the conclusions we make in logic are analytically true. They're true by definition. And who defines these things? Who defines these axioms? We do. We are the ones who define axioms. It's not that logic itself is subjective. It's that the definitions as to how we use logic is subjective, much like math. If I have an equation, right, one plus one equals two, well, that is gonna be absolutely true, no matter what. One as defined as one entity plus another one of those entities is gonna be two as defined as two entities, right? So with absolute certainty, we can say that one plus one equals two, that is absolutely certain. But if we just simply redefined these concepts of one, if we redefined one to mean two entities, well now one plus one equals four. And that's still absolutely true based on the definitions we preset for these concepts. That's the point. We define what axioms mean if the conclusion follows from these premises, then they are absolutely true. So that's how we can have logical absolutes and mathematical absolutes. Not because there's some transcendent mind that, that is beyond us, but because we are the ones definitionally setting these things and defining them into existence. Logic is how our brains operate. We just do it. It's just how our brains operate. Our brains are able to think, our neurons send out firings, they think certain thought processes and a cascade of these thought processes lead to, you know, axioms. And these, these different axioms lead to different structures, syllogisms form, right? And this is how logic operates in our minds. So our brains are the vehicles we use to drive logic. So it's not that we're presupposing logic. It's that we presuppose that logic leads to reliable results. And there's vast differences there. So we don't need anybody to look up to for logic, right? It emanates from us through our brains. Um, but from that, then we're able to describe reality. So to sum it all up, we can have a material reality in which thoughts, which are material, they're just electrochemical impulses in the brain produced by neurons. These are purely physical things. We could have a material reality, a natural physical reality, in which we have logic. We've done, we've just grounded logic in nature. Completely valid. It's a completely valid concept. So in that sense, you don't need a God or a transcendent mind to ground logic nor math or anything in the universe. Everything we know about reality can be traced back to our minds. And the same applies to truth. Truth is that which describes accurately reality, what is. So when a theist asks, that the truth statement that the earth exists, is that still true without humans? Yes, it's true. Only because there is somebody to describe it. But without anybody describing that truth, there is no truth at all. Truth is merely descriptive as well, just like logic. Truth has a separate ontology to nature, just as logic does. We just want to tether them together, whereas we don't have to. There can be separate, hence truth just needs a mind a human mind, and that's it. You don't need a transcendent God to ground truth, logic, or math, or anything. So you can probably see here, the next main issue for the argument is that it's begging the question. Why must your worldview only account for logic and all these things? What's the reasoning behind that? Why can't we ground all these things in a natural reality or a material reality? Where is the logical contradiction? Because if you're going to say that it's impossible for any other worldview to account for these things or for to ground all these things, these preconditions, give the syllogism. Where's the contradiction? P and not P. What, why is it impossible for us to ground these things in a material reality? The argument is merely an assertion that nobody can ground logic except for Christians or Muslims who love to use the argument. It's merely an assertion. It's an obvious tautology. If you define God as an entity who grounds logic, well then of course the logic is gonna be valid when you say that God grounds logic in your syllogism. But it's merely a tautology. There's no evidence behind this entity. Whatever it means, it is not a sound argument whatsoever. But another issue, but this is a minor issue, is if you're gonna say that God grounds all these things, knowledge and logic and morality and, and, and all in mathematics and all these things, 
what you're doing is you're saying that God is equivalent to all these things. How can God be equivalent to logic and morality at the same time? It seems to be that there's a contradiction there. In other words, God is logic and God is morality. That's like saying A equals A and A equals B. It doesn't make any sense, let alone the myriad of other possible questions that can arise from this logic. Well, how does God ground these things? What's the mechanism for God grounding these things? He just says they're true or is God appealing to something else beyond him? It's kind of like an infinite regression that, that emerges, right? It's kind of like kicking the can down the road. Does God really solve this question? But those are just minor questions to ask later on. The main issue is that this argument simply question begging is pretty much circular and uh, is merely a baseless assertion. So hopefully that helped you guys out. Um, please like, subscribe, comment for more, and have a great day.